वेलकम टू स्कूल एफ केमिस्ट्री आम खदर चुपताई एंड यूर वॉचिंग माई यूट्यूब चैनल नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन कैम्ब्रिज इंटरनेशनल ए एस केमिस्ट्री पेपर पेपर टू फेब मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री लेट्स क्वेश्चन नंबर वन पालिंग इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिविटी वैल्यूज ऑफ द एलिमेंट कैन बी यूज टू प्रिडिक द केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज of the compound use the information in table 1.1 here it is element hydrogen lithium carbon oxygen sulfur here are electronegativities of these elements and first ionization energies of these elements and uh, the last one row is second ionization energies of these elements a1 define electronegativity basically power of an atom to attract the shared pair of electron towards itself is the typical definition of electronegativity power of an atom to attract the shared pair of electron towards itself i mean when an atom that is present in form of a molecule and it's attracting the bond pair or shared pair its power to attract that bonded pair or shared pair is said to be electronegativity so power of an atom power of an atom to attract shared pair of electron of electrons towards itself it's a precise typical definition of electronegativity next question next part 2 oxygen and sulfur are in group 16 explain the difference in the pauling electronegativity values of oxygen and sulfur let's see over here in this chart you can see that electronegativity of the oxygen is higher than that of sulfur you know that you can see it from the data booklet that oxygen and sulfur both are lying in the same group and oxygen is at the top then here is sulfur so uh, what is the reason behind it why the electronegativity of the oxygen is higher than sulfur the basic difference is uh, difference of size the next difference is the difference of shells and uh, as far size you can say as for shells and the next difference you can say that is not the basic difference uh, that is going to impact the value of ionization energy is nuclear charge and the last one is attraction so these are the basic major point number 1 size of sulfur or you can write its full name is higher than oxygen the next next thing is uh, there are more shell in sulfur there are more shells in sulfur than oxygen so attraction of the nucleus attraction of nucleus of sulfur is less on less on outer shell electron outer shell bonded electrons so this is the precise answer here i am uh, just not counting the nuclear charge 
basically nuclear charge the impact of nuclear charge is uh, not very much pronounced you can say as the number of shells are going to increase so effect of nuclear charge will not be implicated or it is not going to dominate so uh, once again sulfur of the uh, size of the sulfur is higher than oxygen more shells for sulfur than oxygen so attraction of the nucleus of sulfur is less on its outer shell bonded electron as compared to oxygen as compared to oxygen and so on next part b1 lithium is an ionic compound draw dot and cross diagram of lithium hydride lithium hydrogen include all electrons when lithium is going to make ionic compound i mean it's a metal so it will lose electron as you know lithium belongs to group number 1 it is having two electron in its first shell and one electron in its last shell this is the original picture of lithium whenever it's going to make lithium ion as it is supposed to make ionic compound then it will lose one electron and no electron no shell over here so this is lithium one positive ions electronic configuration what about hydrogen hydrogen is having only one shell once again at this time and this is having one electron initially after the gain of electron in this case hydrogen is gaining electron this is hydride it is said to be hydride lithium hydride lithium hydride in case of hydride hydrogen is one negative so hydrogen is a negative ion in case of hydride and it is i mean gaining one electron from uh it's having it's having one electron and one electron is basically gained from lithium atom so now it is showing one negative charge so this is the proper dot and cross diagram of lithium hydride b part 2 suggests the shape of molecule of h2s h2s hydrogen sulfide basically its shape is quite similar as that of water h2o h2o you know oxygen is having two bond pair around it and two lone pair on it same is the case with the sulfur i am just removing this oxygen and putting a writing s over here so this is h2s here are basically total four pairs surrounding the sulfur two bond pair two bond pairs and two lone pairs so whenever there are two bond pair and two lone pairs i mean it's you can say ap4 type molecule and its bond angle will be equal to 104.5 degree and its shape will be v shape v shape you can write its shape as bent shape you can write its shape as non linear shape you can write its shape as an angular shape and so on next part c write an equation that represents first ionization energy of hydrogen i mean hydrogen is supposed to lose electron what is the first ionization energy amount of energy required to remove one mole of electron from an isolated gaseous atom so isolated gaseous atom hydrogen gaseous when it is losing one electron then it is called its uh, first ionization energy energy required to remove one electron from the isolated hydrogen gaseous atom hydrogen gaseous arrow goes to 
to make hydrogen 1 positive after the loss of one electron. So this is the typical and proper representation of first ionization energy of hydrogen. Explain why there is no information in the table 1.1 for the second ionization energy of hydrogen. Uh, basically, the one thing is hydrogen is having only one electron. Hydrogen is bearing, having, hosting only one electron. So there is no other electron. That's why there is no information of second ionization energy. As it's having only one electron in its last shell or in its shell you can see it. give full electronic configuration of s2 positive s means sulfur from the data booklet we can see that atomic number of s is equal to 16 i mean Atomic number is equal to 16. Its mass is equal to, I think, 32. So we are supposed to write the electronic configuration with respect to this number. But this time it is having plus 2 charge. I mean, now it's having uh, 2 plus charge mean it has lost 2 electron. It has lost 2 electron. So the remaining electron will be 14. 1 is 2. 2s2, 2p6, 10 electron, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p2. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p2. Now these are the total 14 electrons. Part D. CO2, carbon dioxide, and SO2 are acidic gases. Write an equation for the reaction of SO2 with H2O. SO2, whenever it is allowed to react with water, it reacts with H2O to make H2SO3. Simply, you can say, uh, I mean, these two compounds are meeting together. It's not an addition reaction. However, uh, there is the formation of only one thing that is sulfurous acid H2SO3. Two hydrogens, one sulfur, and uh, two plus one, three oxygen. So H2SO3. The next one is part two. Write an equation for the reaction of SO2 with NaOH. SO2 plus NaOH. It's an acid, you can say, I mean, you know that, and it's a base. So there is a formation of salt and water because the base is having oxygen. So there is the formation of H2O plus a salt. What will be the salt? Now, you know that this SO2 has made this acid. So on rough page, you can write H2SO3 plus NaOH. I mean, in aqueous medium, this SO2 is making this sulfurous acid. And when this sulfurous acid is allowed to react with the sodium hydroxide, it's going to make Na2SO3. Na2SO3. Positive part from here, negative part from here. They are going to supposed to make salt. And these two portions are supposed to make water. So I'm putting two over here to balance this chemical equation and there will be two mole of H2O. And it's a balance equation. Yes, it's a balance. So I'm going to write it over here. Na2SO3, it's a balance equation. The next one is part three, construct an, an equation for the reaction of CO2 with MgOH twice. Once again, uh, these are acid-base reaction. Carbon dioxide acid, MgOH twice is the base. CO2 plus MgOH twice goes to. You know, what is the acid of CO2? I am again doing a rough work. The acid of CO2, when CO2 is dissolved into the water, it's making H2 
CO3 that is said to be carbonic acid. When carbonic acid is allowed to react with magnesium hydroxide and it will make salt and water. Water, I mean, two mole of H2O once again and uh, plus positive from this metal, I mean, this metal will be the positive part and this CO3 to negative one will, will be the negative part. So Mg CO3, MgCO3, magnesium carbonate, and it's a balanced equation, and so on. So I'm putting over here, here, 2 mole of H2O plus and uh, MgCO3. MgCO3 uh, and so on. So basically, you can write this equation in this way or uh, uh, we can write this equation in a balanced mode magnesium carbonate will be formed and if i'm balancing this equation i can write this one just h2o just h2o so finally finally co2 one carbon over here one carbon over here i mean and uh, uh, Total four oxygens are over here, four oxygens are over here, one magnesium, one magnesium, yes, it's a balance. So this is the balance equation of CO2 and magnesium hydroxide. Come towards question E, part E, I mean. E1, complete table 1.2 by placing tick, show which of the compound have the molecule with an overall dipole moment. Basically, dipole mo moment means the polarity of the molecule. Polarity of the molecule is based on the nature of central atom of a simple molecule. If there is a simple molecule, then just concentrate on its central atom. If the central atom is having lone pair, number one, if the central atom is having lone pair, it will be polar molecule and its dipole moment will not be equal to zero. I mean, there will be uh, uh, some value of its dipole moment. And the second requirement is if the central atom is having different atom attached by this central atom. If the central atom is bonded with a different atom, if the central atom is having the lone pair of electron, then these two are the main cases in case of simple covalent molecule, those are having single center. Single center molecules, if the central atom is having lone pair, it will be polar. Its dipole moment will be there. It will not be equal to zero. And the second thing is, if there is no lone pair, then the central atom, if the central atom is having different group around it, then again, it will be polar and its dipole moment will not be equal to zero. So let's see over here, in case of carbon dioxide, CO2. This is, I mean, uh, here is the carbon, that is the central atom. And this central atom has no lone pair. Yes, the second requirement, both atoms are same. Both are oxygen atom, those are bonded to the oxygen. So it's not, I mean, it's non-polar. It's non-polar. It is having zero dipole moment. It is having zero dipole moment. So I'm not placing tick in this box. Come toward this one, SO2. In this case, sulfur, uh, the last shell electron of the sulfur is equal to six. And uh, one, two, three, four. Sulfur has used four electrons. Two electrons are over here in form of lone pair. So as I told you, if the central atom is having one lone pair, then it will be polar. Then it will be polar. Come toward this one, CS2. Again, carbon has used all its valence electron in chemical bond formation, in chemical bonding. So there is no lone pair. Moreover, these two atoms, those are directly bonded with us. Carbon are quite same. Again, this, I mean, this molecule, its dipole moment is equal to zero. It's not polar. It's non-polar molecule. Come towards the last one, carbon. 
again it has used all its electron in the bonding there is no any sort of lone pair but it is attaching with the different different atoms so two different atoms are bonded with the carbon so yes it will be polar molecule and its dipole moment will not be equal to zero come toward the next one part two at 150 degrees celsius 103 kilopascal all the compounds listed in table 1.2 are gases under these condition 0.284 gram of one compound occupies the volume 1 to 7 centimeter cube use this information to calculate mr of the compound hence identify the compound from those given in table 1.2 show your work as you know temperature is given pressure is given volume is given and the mass is given and these are all gases so i'm going to use ideal gas equation p v is equal to n into r into t this equation can be written as n that is number of mole that is equal to p into v over r into t here p is equal to 1 or 3 kilopascal but we need pressure in pascal so 103 triple zero pascal volume will be and must be equal to in meter cube so 127 divided by 10 raised to power 6 that is meter cube temperature must be in kelvin so 150 degrees celsius plus 273 that is equal to 423 kelvin and r is given that is a constant that is 8.31 so i am putting these values pressure volume temperature and r to find the answer of mole so n is equal to one or three triple zero multiply by volume that is 127 divided by 10 raised to power 6 i mean if you want to change centimeter cube into meter cube you will have to divide it by 10 raised to power 6 so uh, 1 to 7 divided by 10 raised to power 6 and you, you can also write it over here like or you can write uh, 1.27 into 10 raised to power minus 4 so i am writing this one uh this one and n is equal to n is equal to p into v over divided by r into t r is equal to 8.31 multiply by t is 423 kelvin so that is the answer of mole of that gas one second one or three three zeros multiply by 1.27 into 10 to power minus 4 and the whole answer divided by 8.31 into 423 and here is 3.72 3.72 into 10 to the power minus 3 so this is equal to the mole of this gas you know mole is equal to mass over mr mass over mr and so mass over mr is equal to 3.72 into 10 to the power minus 3 
And MR will be equal to what? Mass is given over here, 0 0.284. And MR will be equal to, MR will be equal to 0 0.284 is a mass divided by this answer, 3.72 into 10 to the power minus 3. So 0 0.284 divided by this answer, 76.31 almost you can see. Identify the compound, which one is having the mass that is equal to 76. Uh, let me check it once again. Uh, let me check it first of all. This one. Carbon 12 plus 32 plus 32. And again 12 plus 16 plus 32. 32 plus 16 plus 16. 12 plus 16 plus 16. So here are the answers. I mean, the overall answer 76 for this one. CS2, its mass is equal to 76. So identity, identity of the compound is CS2, CS2. Now come toward the next one. Question number two, group two elements, magnesium to barium, are all silvery white reactive metal. Draw a label diagram to show the bonding and structure of the group two metal at room temperature. You know, at room temperature, uh, basically all group two metals are in solid state. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to write a typical diagram that is, I mean, atoms are ions of the barium or magnesium atom you can say there must be the layers of static positive ion this is the first layer you can say i'm going to copy and paste this is the second layer and similarly you can say third layer similarly fourth layer layer of static positive ion and so on. The next thing is I'm going to put plus two, plus two, plus two. You, even you can write plus one only. So these are the correct representation of static positive nuclei. I mean layers and a layer of static positive ion. And the second main important thing is there are free delocalized electron. There are free moving delocalized electron or you can say C of free valenced electron, valenced electron. So this is the typical structure, typical diagram that is showing the metallic lattice of group two metal, those are in solid state. Next one, part two, explain why magnesium has higher electrical conductivity than sodium. Magnesium, versus sodium. Magnesium belongs to group number two. Sodium belongs to group number one. Magnesium is having two outermost electrons. Sodium is having only one outermost electron. So basically, electrical conductivity depends upon the number of large shell electron that can be delocalized. Number of outer shell electron that can be delocalized that is the gesture of electrical conductivity. So magnesium is having two electron. Magnesium can delocalize two electron while sodium can delocalize only one electron. Magnesium 
magnesium can delocalize can delocalize two electron to electrons while sodium can delocalize only one electron so that's why magnesium show higher conductivity than sodium next one write an equation for the reaction of magnesium with the cold water when magnesium react with the cold water there is the formation of hydrogen gas and hydroxide magnesium hydroxide magnesium plus h2o goes to magnesium hydroxide whenever a uh, reactive metal uh, you can see the more reactive metal reactive more reactive metal than copper or hydrogen when it is allowed to react with h2o is going to make hydrogen gas number one and second thing is it's supposed to make hydroxide not oxide in cold water the compound that is going to be formed is magnesium or barium or any other metal that is hydroxide so magnesium hydroxide plus hydrogen for the sake of balancing equation i'm putting two over here and it's balanced equation part c identify a single reagent that can be used to distinguish separate samples of dilute magnesium nitrate and barium nitrate i mean we are having two different sample of magnesium nitrate and barium nitrate and he or she is asked to find and how to distinguish uh, these two samples so i'm using a uh, one reagent that is going to give observation with only barium nitrate the reagent is basically sulfuric acid h2so4 aqueous H two four aqueous will give white precipitate. White precipitate with barium nitrate, aqueous barium nitrate, but no observation with magnesium nitrate aqueous. basically magnesium sulfate is soluble magnesium nitrate when react with sulfuric acid it is supposed to form that i mean magnesium sulfate sulfate is supposed to form that is soluble water soluble but when the barium nitrate is, is allowed to react with sulfuric acid it is going to make barium sulfate that is famous white insoluble solid so in this way in this case you can use sulfuric acid next one part d d1 describe what is observed when strontium iodide aqueous react with concentrated sulfuric acid two marks describe what is observed when strontium iodide aqueous reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid especially for two marks so uh, as far as my opinion is concerned number one strontium is going to react with the sulfate ion again white precipitate will be formed white precipitate is formed second one here is the presence of i negative ion and we are using concentrated sulfuric acid so there is a redox reaction happening i mean there uh, will be the formation of i2 i2 aqueous it may be a brown solution solution turns brown brownish solution will be observed there may be the formation of yellow solid yellow solid that is sulfur similarly there may be the formation of h2s rotten egg smell gas 
So white precipitate will be formed because of strontium and sulfate ion as far as my opinion is concerned. And I2 is also supposed to be formed as uh, sulfuric acid. Concentrated sulfuric acid is behaving as an oxidizing agent, stronger oxidizing agent. So because of formation of I2, because of formation of I2 aqueous, solution will turn brown. White precipitate because of strontium sulfate, brownish solution because of iodine, yellow solid because of sulfur, and there may be effervescence because of hydrogen sulfide or even you can write SO2 gas as well. Next portion, D2. Compound X and anhydrous group 2 bromide is dissolved in water and titrated against aqueous silver nitrate. A solution containing 0.250 gram of X required 33.65 cm cube of 0 0.005 mole per dm cube AgNO3 for complete reaction. Identify X, show you are working. So group 2 bromide, compound X, this is having bromide, group 2 bromide that is dissolved in water and then it is reacted with silver nitrate. First of all, we need to write an equation. The second thing is, this is the data from which we can find the number of moles. From this data, we can find the moles. First of all, I'm going to write the equation. I mean, group two bromide compound is X, you can say, and uh, the whole compound, let's suppose, I mean, uh, MPR2 is some, M is the group 2 metal, Br2, and it is allowed to react with silver nitrate, AgNO3 aqueous goes to, there will be the formation of AgBr, AgBr plus, there will be the formation of MnO3 twice. As you know, M is having plus 2 charge because it belongs to group, group number 2. So to balance this equation, to balance Br especially, we will have to put 2 over here. And uh, to balance then silver, we will have to put 2 over here. And uh, nitrate are balanced, M is balanced. Now this equation is balanced. So basically, 2 mole of AgNO3 is equal to 1 mole of group 2 bromide. So the mole ratio between silver nitrate and moles of Group 2 bromide is 1 ratio 2 or 2 ratio 1. Now we can find the mole of AgNO3 from this given data. Moles of AgNO3, silver nitrate that is equal to uh, 33.65 multiplied by 0 0.050 and whole divided by 1000 and whole divided by 1000 and the answer is 1.68 into 10 raised to power minus 3 1.68 in 10 to power minus 3 is the mole of silver nitrate right in this case you can see that uh, basically these moles are going to react, I mean, according to this balanced chemical equation, AgNO3 versus MBr2. And you know from this equation, 2 mole of AgNO3 is equal to 1 mole of MBr2. And in this experiment, we are using this one. 1.68 into 10 raised to power minus 3, then how much mole of MBr will be over here? I mean, if AgNO3 is equal to 2, MBr2 is equal to 1, half. So AgNO3 is equal to 1.62 into 10 raised to power minus 3. The mole of MBr will be equal to, divided by this number, I mean, that will be equal to 8.41. 8.41 into 10 raised to power minus 4. 
10 raised to power minus 4. So these are the total moles of MBr2. So moles of MBr2 is equal to 8.41 into 10 to the power minus 4. And the mass is also given. This whole compound is having mass of MBr2 is equal to 0 0.2. 250. So the finally we are going to find the MR. Again, MR. MR is equal to uh, mass mass over moles. So it's equal to 0 0.250 divided by 8.41 into 10 to the power minus 4. 0 0.250 divided by this answer and it's equal to MR is equal to 297. So the whole MBR2 MBR2 is equal to 297. You know here are two BR, I mean the 1 BR is equal to 1 bromine. The mass of our AR of 1 bromine is equal to 79.9, uh, I mean 80 you can say. So M plus 160 is equal to 297 and M is equal to 297 minus 160 that is 137 137 and this 137 is the AR of barium barium got it now come to the next one this is the organic portion question number three alkenes undergo an addition reaction with one ratio one mixture of CO and H2 to form aldehyde. Figure 3.1 shows the reaction of propene with one or oh, one ratio of COH2, one mole of CO, one mole of H2, and so on. Propene is going to react to make compound A, and this is the compound B. Number one, A part one, define addition reaction. In addition reaction, in addition reaction two molecules two molecules uh, meet together to make single molecule to make single molecule this is the shortest definition you can say for one marks Aldehyde A and B are structural isomers. State type of structural isomers shown by A and B. So first of all, let me check their longest chain. One, two, two, three, four. So A is having four carbon in its chain, while the longest chain in B, one carbon, carbon number two, carbon number three. Three carbons are over here. So they are, uh, there is a difference of the longest chain, this, uh, the length of the maximum carbon atoms in the longest chain, you can say. So these are said to be chain isomers. They are said to be chain isomers. So they are showing chain isomerism. Name compound A. Once again, uh, we will have to find the longest chain. This is the longest chain in front of you. One, two, three, and four. This compound is having maximum four number of carbon atom in its longest chain and there is no any sort of branch. So this carbon is always carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, and carbon number four. I mean, four carbons are lying in this structure and there is only one functional group 
as you know there are basically you can say four major part of of an organic compound to write its name i mean branch then we will write its longest chain then we will write suffix in or in and finally we write the functional group so there is no branch in this case there is no branch there is only longest chain there is all alkene i mean carbon carbon single bond and functional group is aldehyde so i am going to write its name longest chain is having four carbon atom four carbon atoms four carbon names start from but but the next portion is as i mean suffix that is uh, in or in all carbon carbons are single bond so i am going to write in plus at the end i am writing functional group that is aldehyde and we use just all for aldehyde as a is the vowel word so i am removing this e finally its name is but in all but in all is the name of compound a but in all next question part 4 the complete reaction of propene with one ratio one mixture of co and h2 produces a and b two i mean compounds only the product mixture contains 96% a and 4% b the product mixture contains 96% a and 4% b calculate the mass of a produced in this reaction when 5 into 10 to the power 3 kg of the propene is used first of all i mean uh, we are going to add uh, propene co and h2 so if we are using propene here as a reaction you can see that over here i am raising the other stuff let's see over here in this case if uh, uh, one to one ratio mole is going to be formed i mean one mole of co one mole of h2 and let's suppose one mole of propene is supposed to be used so overall mass what is the mass of all these three species propene i mean c3 h6 plus co plus hydrogen goes to so its mass is equal to uh, i mean 42 6 plus 36 plus the mass of co is equal to 28 and the mass of hydrogen is equal to 2 so aldehydes a uh, i mean b will be formed and the total mass will be equal to 42 plus 28 plus 2 that is equal to 72 so if we are using one ratio one mole of hydrogen co carbon monoxide and uh, this propene as far as my understanding is concerned you can say uh, this is the total mass i mean 72 gram of the mass is going to meet to make obviously 72 gram of aldehyde i mean it is the law of conservation of mass according to law of conservation of mass the basically 72 gram of reactants are meeting together so overall 72 gram of aldehyde will be formed in this 72 what is the mass of propene the mass of propene is 42 so 42 gram uh, propene propene uh, is going to make 72 gram overall both a plus b and uh, if i'm using let's suppose i am changing this grams into kg uh, the 40 2 gram if i am going to change it into kg is kg will be equal to 42 divided by 1000 that is equal to 0.042 kg of propene will be equal to 
to kg of both. And now uh, at the moment we are using 5 into 10 raised to power 3 kg of propene. So what will be the, I mean, what will be the total amount of aldehyde that can be made by using 5 into 10 raised to power 3 kg? So uh, 0 0.072 divided by 0 0.042 and multiply by 5000. So the answer is 8571 kg. Total A plus B, the mass of total aldehyde that can be made that is equal to 8571 kg. And here he is saying or she is saying that 96% of A is over here and we are supposed to calculate the mass of A. So 96% of this mass, 8571 into 96 over 100. So I mean multiply by 96 divided by 100. And the answer is 8228 kilogram. As far as my understanding level is concerned, uh, this is the appropriate way, but it's not the one mark question. Part B, A and B show reactions typical of aliphatic aldehydes. A undergo nucleophilic addition reaction with a mixture of HCN and KCN forming compound C. Complete the diagram to show the mechanism for this reaction. Include charges, dipole, lone pairs of electrons, curly arrows as appropriate. Draw the structure of organic intermediate. First of all, this is the A. And here is only one polar bond that is this one. Carbon partially positive, oxygen is partial negative. And we are supposed to react with CN negative ion because we are adding KCN and HCN basically. So C and negative ion, C triple bond, and you can write it like that. The carbon is having a negative charge. So in this case, the first curly arrow will be drawn from this negative to this carbon. I mean, this carbon, negative charge of the carbon will hit, will attack on this carbon atom. And at the same time, there is the breaking of C double bond O. And we are going to have this intermediate. These are the... I mean, older part of the molecule. This is the new part. And here is the negative charge. This bond has been shifted in form of negative charge. In next step, uh, we can use HCN. We can, or we can also use H2O. However, I'm using this time HCN. H is partial positive in this case. And so O is going to attack on this uh, hydrogen atom that is relatively more partially positive and there is a formation of this C plus CN negative ion is formed. Next one. Part 2, table 3.1 shows information about three experiment involving B. Involving B. Complete table 3.1. Experiment 1 uh, reagents observation with the B what is going to change its solution from um, turn solution from orange to green when it is allowed to with B B is an aldehyde so which one is supposed to change its color from orange to green that is acidified acidified K2Cr2O7 so acidified aqueous potassium dichromate when it is allowed to react with any aldehyde, it is an oxidizing agent. It will change its color from orange to green. Next, a silver mirror form on the side of the reaction vessel. Once again, who is going to react with the silver, sorry, who is going to react with aldehyde to make silver? It is said to be silver mirror test as well. I mean, that is Tollins reagent and that is diamino silver complex in alkaline solution, diamino silver complex, or you can write Tollins reagent. So Tollins reagent, 
Tollins solution, Tollins reagent, or you can add, I mean, AG NH3 twice, one positive in, uh, I mean, alkali plus OH negative ion aqueous. OH negative ion aqueous. In the last one, third one, BR2 aqueous, if we are using BR2 aqueous, then uh, you can see that we are having uh, no reaction, no observation, no reaction, no observation, because there's no any sort of presence of carbon carbon double bond in B. No carbon carbon double bond is present in B. So basically, no observation, no observation. Right. The next one, B, C4H8O is oxidized by acidified potassium magnate. You know it's an oxidizing agent. Complete the equation for this reaction. Use O bracket to represent the one atom of oxygen from oxidizing agent. You know when aldehyde is oxidized, there is only one possible answer. There is only one possible product that is acid. And I'm going to add or I'm going to introduce basically this oxygen. And we are having the new compound that is having one more oxygen. One more oxygen, C4H8O2 is the answer. So whenever once again an aldehyde is supposed to oxidize, there is the formation of, there is the formation of an acid. Next part, C is a chiral molecule, circle any chiral center in the structure of C, figure 3.2. Chiral center is a center, is a carbon, chiral carbon. I mean, chiral carbon is a carbon that is attaching with four different group. That is called chiral center, that is called chiral carbon, that is called stereo center, and so on. So, just have a look. This carbon is having one group over here, and this is the second group, OH group. Here is the third group, I mean hydrogen. And here is CN group. So yes, this carbon is chiral carbon. This carbon is a chiral carbon. I'm writing, I'm marking circle over here. So this carbon is the chiral center or chiral carbon. When propene reacts with carbon monoxide, CO, and with CO and excess H2, an alkene and mixture of alcohols are formed instead. I mean, this time, alcohols are supposed to be formed and an alkenes is supposed to be made or to be formed. Alcohols are isomers of each other. Suggest the molecular formula of the alkene and the alcohol that are formed under these conditions. You know, we are starting from propene. We are having uh, hydrogen. So, what is the alkene? When propene react with the hydrogen, alkene that is supposed to be formed is propene. The next possibility is pro propene may react with CO, but this time there will be no possibility of formation of any alkene. Any other compound will be formed. So, CO, uh, addition of CO is not the correct option. Addition of H2 with propene, I mean, there is a formation of propane. Propane. Molecular formula uh, of propane will be C3H8. C3H8. The next one. Molecular formula of alcohol. Once again, I'm going back towards the original aldehydes, A and B, you can say, these are A and B. I'm taking B. When this B is further reduced, it can change into alcohol. I mean, this molecule can be changed, further change into alcohol. And this time, its formula will be uh, I mean, CH2OH, CH2OH, 
Here is one carbon hydrogen. Here is one carbon free hydrogen. Here is one carbon three hydrogens. And overall, this is the one of the possible answer. So how many carbon are there? I mean, uh, four carbons are over here. How many hydrogens are there? I think 10. 3 plus 3, 6, 7, 8, and 2. 10 hydrogens are there. And one oxygen is over here. So C4H10O. C4H10O. Uh, it's alcohol. It's formula is C4H10O. And as he is asking, just formula. Part D. Reaction of ethene C2H4 with one ratio one mixture of CO and hydrogen is shown in the equation one. Equation one is over here. This is the equation one. As amphoteric at atmospheric pressure, a cobalt based catalyst is used in this reaction. State and explain. State and explain the effect of using catalyst on this reaction. Number one, state. Catalyst increases the rate of reaction. Increases the rate of reaction. Rate of reaction. Number two, explanation. Basically, catalyst changes the path of reaction. Path of reaction. And it lowers energy of activation, energy of activation, and more particles are having energy now, and now more particles are having energy. energy then energy of activation next part explain why the yield of this one aldehyde ca3 ch2 cho increases when the overall pressure of the reaction mixture is increased when pressure is increased then Equilibrium will be shifted towards that side where there are less number of mole. Let me count the number of moles. Here is one mole of ethene, that is a gas. It's also gas. One mole of CO, one mole of H2, it's also gas. So overall, three moles of the gases are lying over here on the left hand side. And here is only one mole of gas. So right hand side is having less mole. There are, as it is of one mark, there are less number of moles, number of moles on right hand side. So equilibrium position will be shifted. Equilibrium position will shift towards right hand side. You can write the full form, right hand side and so on. Use the information in table 3.2 to calculate the enthalpy change of delta H R for this reaction. Here is the reaction and the data that is given uh, is enthalpy of formation. Enthalpy of formation of one mole of C2H4. Enthalpy of formation of one mole of CO is equal to minus one, one, one. Enthalpy of formation of one mole of CH3, CH2, CHO, and so on. Basically, I'm using my own method. You can call it his rule. I am, I mean, applying Hess's cycle, and in Hess's cycle, I'm using my own method, my own rule. Let's see over here. 
how to solve it. I mean, uh, C two H four gas CO gas goes plus sorry is H two gas goes to CH three CH two CHO gas. Enthalpy of formation. All data belongs to the formation. So I'm taking elements in a box. I'm taking three elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. There are three types of elements. So I'm taking three type, uh, three type of element in this box. So I'm supposed to make, supposed to form this one. That is ethanol, this one. And its enthalpy is equal to minus 187. I am supposed to make this ethene from the same box. And it's uh, I'm going to make one mole. And the answer of formation of ethene of one mole is plus 52. Now I am also making one mole. I am making one mole of CO. And its answer is, its formation is minus triple one kilojoules per mole. There is no need to draw the uh, vector, draw the arrow for the hydrogen because it's an element, there is no change. However, let me balance the equation. I mean, two carbons should be three carbons, sorry, it could be there. And overall on this side, three carbon atoms are there. How many hydrogens are there? Six hydrogens are there overall. Overall, two carbons are, three carbons are over here and six hydrogens are over here. One oxygen is over here, so I am putting half. Same is the case. Let me check on the right-hand side. Three mole of carbons, yes. Overall, uh, hydrogen is equal to six, yes. One oxygen, yes. So all roots are balanced. Now, Let's suppose the answer of this delta HR is equal to X. Now here you can see uh, these arrows can be called as vector. That is a basically a his root. I'm uh, considering these arrows as a vector. So these are two parallel vector. I'm going to add them. I am writing another a shortcut over here. I mean the sum of these two number uh, minus triple one plus 52 that is equal to minus 59 over here and this arrow is having this one minus 187 and we are supposed to find the answer of delta hr this red arrow that's delta hr and now i am going to apply head to tail rule now which one vector is going to behave as a resultant vector? This vector is going to behave as a resultant vector. Its tail and its heads are meeting with the other vector. So it means that oh, minus 187 is equal to delta HR plus minus 59. So what is the delta HR that is equal to minus 187 plus 59 that is equal to delta HR. Uh, once again, minus 187 plus 59 that is equal to delta HR and its answer is equal to minus 128 minus 128. As far as my opinion is concerned, uh, that is the now, easiest method or, and you can say it's a lengthier one, but it's easiest one. Uh, the reaction mixer is cooled to collect this one aldehyde as a liquid, right? Identify all type of van der Waals forces that are present between the molecule of this aldehyde. Number one, temporary dipole, temporary, temporary dipole, dash induced dipole forces these forces are present in every covalent molecule induced uh, dipole forces and the second one as you can see that here is the polar 
bond and here is a polar group the second one will be dipole dash dipole forces so two forces are present over here and so on question number four figure 4.1 shows some reactions of compound d to bromobutane to bromobutane this is the D and it is converting itself into E, into F, into G, into H and so on. D reaction one, D is changing itself into E, E is changing into addition polymerization, I mean into addition polymer. This T is changing itself into F that is an alcohol. Alcohol is further going to react with alkaline iodine. Uh, this B in reaction 4 is going to change or going to react with KCN to change itself into uh, nitrile G. G is converting itself into H that is the primary amine. Let's see over here what are the questions basically. A. Part 1. State the region and condition used to form E in reaction 1. Reaction 1. This is E and we are going to remove, eliminate BR and we are supposed to make carbon carbon double bond so this is called elimination reaction and the reagents are sodium hydroxide it's an elimination reaction sodium hydroxide and a oh sodium hydroxide in ethanol in ethanol and heat so when this compound D is heated with NOH in ethanol, then there is the formation of carbon-carbon double bond compound and this is called elimination reaction. Draw the structure of one of the repeating unit of the addition polymer that forms from E. So E, here is E and it is supposed to make addition polymer. What is the structure of E? What is the name of E? It is basically one, two, three, four, and it is, I mean, but two in, but two in. So I am going to write it once again as a rough work. I'm writing it over here. It's a but two in. I'm going to write butuene like that. It's a butuene. When butuene is allowed to react with the similar butuene, with the same butuene, then one will be formed. That is, I'm shifting this carbon carbon double bond over here. It will be shifted over here. So we are going to have CH, CH3 single bond remaining over here H CA3 newly bond single form this one and CH CH3 single bond over here H CA3 newly shifted single bond and one single bond should be there must be there so this is the basically repeated, uh, is, I mean, unit of the polymer. And you can call this, this is the one uh, repeating unit. This is one repeating unit. And now I'm erasing my monomers. So this is the correct option for two. E also form when F is heated strongly in the presence of Al2O3, what is the equation of this reaction? Al2O3, Al2O3 is basically, you can say, it's a dehydrating agent, dehydrating agent. E also forms when F is heated. Let's see over here. What is E? And here is E. E, I mean, when it is going to uh, is formed when F is going to heat. So I'm going to write the equation over here. What is the formula of F? 
वन टू थ्री फोर फोर कार्बन अल्कोहल यू कैन से एंड इट्स फॉर्मूला विल बी सी फोर एच टेन ओ सो वेन इट इज स्ट्रॉन्गली हीटेड देर इज डिहाइड्रेशन और इट इज सेट टू बी द इलिमिनेशन एंड देर इज द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एच टू ओ प्लस आई मीन यू आर हैविंग सी फोर एच एट सो दिस इज द एग्जैक्ट इक्वेशन फॉर दिस सेट क्वेश्चन प्रिडिक्ट वट इज ऑब्जर्व इन रैक्शन टू रैक्शन टू रैक्शन टू दिस इज द रैक्शन टू वेन दिस हेलो अल्केन इज गोइंग चेंज इट सेल्फ इन टू अल्कोहल इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ सिल्वर नाइट्रेट सो इट मीन्स दैट इन दिस रैक्शन we are i mean uh, detaching this br from this compound so in this reaction there will be uh, alcohol plus br aqueous br negative ion aqueous because of the presence of silver ion in the reaction mixture they will meet together to make agbr and agbr is of white precipitate so observation is formation of of white precipitate formation of shin of of white precipitate or creamy precipitate creamy precipitate you can say the next one identify the yellow precipitate and organic ion form in reaction 3 reaction 3 reaction 3 here is reaction 3 and this is called iodo form test or iodoform reaction you can say whenever this molecule is reacted with alkaline iodine basically that is an aqueous alkaline iodine yellow precipitate are formed and this molecule is first of all it oxidizes it changes itself into this compound i mean you can write it like that the next step is there is the cleavage of this ch3 and cc bond basically this cleavage is happening over here and at that time this c is not having hydrogen this c is having free iodo group so ci3 yellow precipitate ci3h i mean the next will be the hydrogen or you can say ch i3 tri iodomethane and the next portion this portion will change itself into into o negative ion or you can write it like that over here this is the an organic ion and the yellow precipitate is this one so yellow precipitate yellow precipitate identify the yellow precipitate that is c h i 3 comma tri iodo methane tri iodo methane and organic ion as you have seen that o c double bond o ch2 and ch3 negative ion that is an organic ion that is an organic ion yes the next one state the type of reaction that occur in reaction 4 reaction 4 reaction 4 here is reaction 4 in reaction 4 basically uh basically once again there is a, a replacement of br by cn group so this is called substitution whenever halogen is substituting by any group or halogen is substituting any other group if the halogen is substituting or halogen is substituted by the other group this is called substitution reaction this is called substitution simply speaking it is said to be a substitution reaction the type of reaction is substitution substitution the next one reaction 5 is similar to the uh, reaction of lithium aluminum hydride with carboxylic acid to form alcohol suggest the role of lithium aluminum hydride when lithium aluminum hydride 
is reacted with carboxylic acid it makes alcohol this is called reduction this is called reduction and is lithium aluminum hydride is called reducing agent it is said to be reducing agent d part 1 4.2 shows infrared spectrum of one compound d e f g r h that is over here and uh, the question is use information from the table 4.1 on page 14 to identify which of the compound d e f g h produces the inf uh, infrared spectrum in 4.2 and explain your answer it is for two marks here is the table 4.1 and let me check uh, this picture first of all i am uh, roughly dividing this spectrum into two equal and um, half portions so these are the basic main signals you can say are the strong signals you can say but uh, we are not concerned with the signals those are before i mean those are having the less wave number less than that of 1500 so i'm just counting these two basic major p one is lying over here one is lying over here almost that is uh, more than 2 to double o and this peak is around you can say 3000 so let me open that data booklet uh, 2 to double o 2 to double o 2 to double o range is for the nitride so this compound this uh, molecule must be having c triple bond n number 1 and around 3000 this one there must be ch bond yes over here so which one is having nitrile group and rest of ch group that is g that is g so g is the correct option or correct answer g is the correct option this spectrum belongs to g as a uh, spectrum showing spectrum showing a uh, peak or signal you can say at 220 that is equal to c triple bond n and uh, uh, the next one is almost you can say 2950 and the ch bonds at 2950 wave number so it's g okay the next one the last one the mass spectrum of d relative uh, abundance of the molecular ion uh, peak is 3.4 and predict the relative abundance of m plus 2 peak for d you know the mass spectrum of d d is having basically 1 br is a bromo alkane this one two bromo butane this compound is having one halogen so it will be having two mrs if the compound is having one halogen its mrs will be two one is said to be simple m and second one is said to be m plus 2 so its uh, peak is having two peaks in its molecular ion region one is it said to be molecular ion peak simple m plus peak m positive ion peak i mean and the second peak will be m plus 2 peak and you know here is the presence of br if the halogen is br then the height of these two peak height of m peak and m plus 2 peak will be equal because the isotope of the bromine one is 79 other one is 81 they both are lying in one ratio one so the height of the peak height of m ion peak height of m plus 2 ion peak must be equal must be the same in as the isotope are in one ratio one so in the mass spectrum b the relative abundance of the molecular ion is 3.4 so Uh, as i told you 
abundance of m plus 2 will also be 3.4 as uh, ratio of two isotopes of br br79 and br81 is one ratio one naturally and so on so that's all about this one please subscribe my channel hit the bell icon and share this lecture with your friend thank you very much have a nice day